All right, folks, welcome back to Peachland, North Carolina, Firewater Farm, Sawmill. Today we finished up cutting up some eight by eights. We finished this one up. I'll we'll show you a little something special we've been working on at the farm here in the last month. Uh, we started it in, uh, I, think, I think we sowed it in May. We got a trellis up the other day and uh, we're just gonna kind of show you what we've been working on. Y'all hang on, these are the eight by eights we just got done cutting. Now my wife, she's been telling me to get more views, I need to show a little leg. I can't understand that. So she's got me in a pair of shorts today. You don't never see me in shorts. <laughs> uh, just figured y'all would get a kick out of that. So y'all hang on, I'm gonna show you something special. What we got here is a I was always told it was a 1947 model. Never run the serial numbers to actually find what year it is, but that's what my great uncle, who I bought it from, told me. 47 model, Super A. He bought this from the South Carolina Highway Division. This used to be a road tractor. It used to be painted yalla. He went down through there with a paintbrush and tried to make it look like a regular old farm all painted it red. But this is what I, I garden with. This is what I lay my rows off with. The way I was taught the garden, is with the Super A, and you lay your rows off four feet, four feet apart. So this tractor lays off. I got a layoff plow I put right here in the middle. I got my cultivators on right now, but when I go to lay my rows off, I got a plow that sits right down here in the middle. And what I do with that is I go down through there and I lay my row off, and I go back down through there and plant my seeds. So that gives me four feet at a time. I got my cultivators on now. I've been cultivating the garden. So what I did, I laid it off, sowed my seed, let it come up. Now we got everything coming up. I always was taught that you try to get as straight as row as you can. My great uncle used to brag and say, if you took a 22 rifle and shot the first plants, you'd take every one of them out because his rows were so straight. That's what we try to get out here. We try to get a good straight row, mainly so it looks good and everything will cultivate good and our drip tape runs right. So our garden is 100 foot long. I got 10 rows. Uh, I'm not advertising by no means. I'm just gonna tell you what I've done. So maybe y'all might want to do this. I bought a uh, irrigation kit from Berry Hill Irrigation, 1,000 foot kit. So I got 10 rows, 100 foot, that makes 1,000 foot of drip tape. Put that down, then I strawed my garden, put straw over top of it, one for weed control and one to help with moisture, keep the moisture in, because we're going to have some pretty hot summer days are coming. So you don't want to be out there wasting water, try to conserve as much as we can. That straw will keep that moisture down in the ground good. We won't have to worry about water as much. Just wanted to show you a little bit about this farm all. My great uncle always told me you need two things to run a farm all. One's a hammer and one's an adjustment wrench. He said pretty much you can do anything on this tractor that you need to do with an adjustment wrench and a hammer. And I believe it. If you got a 9 16 a half inch and a 5 8 wrench, you pretty much can rebuild this whole machine. Well, you need a three quarter throw a three quarter wrench in there. You can have this whole machine in the floor with them three wrenches, because this thing was built in America by the American people, and that's why it's still running. You don't find stuff that's built like this too much. Now we're gonna walk you through the garden a little bit, so y'all hang on. All right, this is our sweet corn right here. Well, we got three rows, 100 foot long. I mentioned the fact that the Super A plants four feet rows, so these are four foot apart. You can get down in there and pick it good. As you can see, we. We got that drip tape down in there. Like I said, I got that from Bear Hill Irrigation. I got a timer on it. When I'm busy sawing wood or checking the cows or doing whatever, that timer will come on and it'll keep a steady amount of water on this stuff. You don't have to waste water with sprinklers. So that's our sweet corn. Over here we got our lima beans. This is what you call Jackson Wonder. I call them speckled butter beans because when they get ready to be picked, then instead of being green, they'll have some specks on them. I just like the color of the Jackson Wonder when I freeze them and I get them in a quart bag. It just looks pretty to me. But they're, they're a bush bean, so I didn't have to trellis them. And over here we have our, our pink eye purple hoils. I love these things. My wife hates them because we have to sit around and shell them all the time. But uh, you know what? When you get in the 90s and it gets hot and you get done early in the morning picking your peas, kind of nice to sit in the house in air conditioning and turn on a movie and start shelling peas. So. Uh, over here, these are our green beans. This is a pole bean we planted. Now, this is a trellis that we have these pole beans on. I'm not advertising by no means again, just telling you where I got this in case y'all want to do this. I bought this trellis mesh from uh, Johnny Seed Company online. Uh, they have this stuff uh, in several different lengths and several different widths. I put T-post every 10 foot and you can see these beans are crawling all the way up it. Uh, they done crawled all the way to the top. Now they're starting to crawl down. I don't know what they're going to do. I guess they're going to crawl down and crawl back up. That's normally what they do. But uh, just going to tell you about that trellis mesh. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit of work putting it up initially. But when you get done with it, a lot of people use cattle panels and this and that and other. Cattle panels are fine, but I don't know if y'all price cattle panels right now. They're outrageously high. And then at the end of the year with the cattle panel, you got all these vines you got to contend with. With this mesh, 
I just go down through there, cut my zip ties, take my rope off the top, roll it up in a big pile, take it out of the garden, put it in my burn pile, and burn it and get rid of it, because it's very inexpensive. Just wanted to show you a little bit about what we've been doing in a previous video. You probably seen in the top right, you can check it out. We was doing some uh, saw milling and Dave caught me out there shoveling what I call black gold out on the garden. And fertilizers are high this year, along with everything else, diesel fuel and groceries and all that. So uh, what we did, we composted a pile where I feed my hay at. I was feeding my hay there two years ago. And what I did, I added a little sawdust. I piled that stuff up in a pile and let it go through a heat this winter to get all the weed seeds out. And that's what we were doing. I was going along with the tractor and shoveling that black gold out on my plants for fertilizer. So I didn't, I didn't have to use no chemical fertilizer. It was all organic straight off the farm. We like that just because I try to stay away from chemicals as much as I can. You know, if you're going to do chemical stuff, you might as well just go to the grocery store and buy it. So I hope this helped people that uh, are looking to maybe grow some green beans or grow some tomatoes. Just uh, we've done a lot of work out here. Kind of wanted to show you the garden, show you what we've been working on. Hopefully this thing's going to feed us and provide for us. If y'all have any questions or comments, hit us up and we appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate the subscribers. Hope y'all have a good day. All right, so folks, this, this hand crank's got a keyway in it. You just kind of funnel it around in there, find the, find the slot. You want to get it right here where you get in the motor. And I always like to do it like this because you'll have a kickback sometimes and you can let go of it. Kickback sometimes will break your arm. Now, the only thing you do is pull on it. Well, sometimes it takes a couple little runs, but that's hand cranking a Super A tractor right there. Like I say, most time we use a starter, but I'm going to show you how to hand crank one. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Have a good one.